<laughs> oh no. Maybe that wasn't such a great idea. Good afternoon YouTube, my name is Brandon and welcome to episode two of the Honda TRX rebuild series. So we're back at it. If you remember in the last episode, I was debating whether or not I wanted to replace the gas tank with maybe like a plastic aftermarket one or refinish this one. Well, I think I've made up my mind. There's some rust down inside the tank and you see it's got some scaly rust over there and it's kind of rusty down in the bottom. You can see some shiny rust down there. So let me show you what I found. We're going to give it a try and I'm hoping it's going to work. So as I was doing my research to try to figure out do I want to keep the original metal tank or go with the plastic aftermarket. Obviously the plastic aftermarket tank would kind of be a set it and forget it type thing. I never have to worry about it rusting again. Uh, but the issue is is that the filler neck on the gas tank on the plastic one is larger than the filler neck on the metal one. So what I would have had to have done is drilled a hole in this plastic bigger because that's where the uh, filler neck goes up through for the gas tank. So I didn't, I don't know, I don't really want to mess with those plastics too much. This company called Metal Rescue, it's a uh, rust remover bath. Look at that, motorcycle gas tanks. They literally have this product uh, that's also designed just for gas tanks. It can be soaked right in the tank and Here's a little bit of a literature of their stuff, but well, it's no acids, non-toxic, fume-free, safe on skin, environmentally friendly. So a lot of places you can just wash this down the drain. So uh, you don't have all the hazards as, uh, as you would working with an acid. And they make a liquid, a gel, and they make what's called a dry coat, I guess. So after you're done, you can apply that. So anyways, enough talking about this. The first thing we've got to do, it says remove the tank, and we've got to prep it. Uh, which means we got to get any loose and flaky stuff out of the tank and wash it out. There's no gas in the tank, so we're going to go wash it out with some uh, soapy water and a degreaser. I'm putting hot, uh, hot water in this too. I assume it'll probably help a little bit better. I think what I'm going to do is just fill it full of water first, slosh it around, and we'll uh, take a gander and see what comes out of this thing. Oh yeah, well, chunks are coming out right there. Look at that. So you want to try to get this loose. Uh, you want to try to get this loose, flaky rust out of there if you can gonna work a lot better. And these lines right here, I'm gonna actually uh, take a short piece of uh, fuel line and just loop it from one to the next. This will just keep our this will just keep our solution inside the tank. There, yeah, I just did that little thing there. So let's put some uh, degreaser in it. Just spraying some uh, wheel and tire cleaner in it. I know it's a good uh, degreaser because I use it for a lot of a lot of stuff. Pour some of that. Now it doesn't say this in the directions, but I got a small handful of some uh, quarter inch. Uh, just some small quarter inch nuts. I'm going to throw those in there. And uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of agitate the tank around and uh, see if that will help loosen up any of that scaly rust inside. doesn't say to do that, so I'm just kind of doing that on my own. Then we'll put the gas gas cap on it. I grabbed a, a white bucket so it'll contrast a little bit better. Oh 
Oh yeah, look at that. Already it's... Looks like it might be doing something. <laughs> oh no. Maybe that wasn't such a great idea. There's a little... This filler neck has like a little one inch lip inside that uh... Yeah, so it's not like I just dump these nuts out. <laughs> oh boy, let's see. Magnet? Is that what we're doing? Magnet? Yeah, I don't think using the magnet was a bad idea. I mean, using the nuts in there was a bad idea. I think they'll come right out. Oh yeah, they'll come out. Might just take a little extra time. We'll leave them in there. I know I can get them out. Put some more of that solution in there. If a little's good, more is better, right? See what we're getting out of this thing. Huh, that is working, just shaking it around like that. Let's take a look at uh, what was what we pulled out of it. I'll try to siphon like some of the water off here. Yeah, that, that did a good job. That's quite a bit. So, yeah, I think I'm just gonna flush the tank out one more time, then we'll get going with water. All right, next step, we've taken all the loose and flaky stuff out of it. It's safe on chrome, rubber seals, gaskets and O-rings. Wash the tank to get out any stuff. And add it to the tank. And they say it's best, I guess, to fill it all the way to the top uh, so you can fully submerge everything. This is, uh, that's what it is. It says, uh, add it to one gallon of water. Biodegradable contains no VOCs, solvents, acids, or hazardous ingredients. Hmm. So it says to uh, soak times vary, vary, light rust up to two hours, moderate rust up to uh, 12 hours heavy rust up to 48 hours uh, once it's de-rusted uh, promptly remove the solution uh, because it may darken the color inside we don't care about that but one thing I did want to show you is look at this check this out um, so these are a couple gas tanks uh, this one's a Yamaha gas tank you can see they've cut it in half to show what's going on but look at this this is a half soak, soaked gas tank. Look how clean that is. It almost looks like it's been sandblasted uh, to compare to how that is. So, boy, I'll tell you, if that's what that does to this, we're, we're, uh, we're in. That's what I want. So, make sure you're wearing goggles or glasses. You know, what we'll do is I'll uh, we'll fill this with uh, nice hot water. Yeah. Huh. Has no smell whatsoever. I know you're not supposed to do that, but oh well, whatever. All right, let's go put some hot water in. And it says if you uh, filter this through a strainer, if if it's completely black when you drain this out, 
then it's not any good anymore. Um, but if it's still got some color left to it, you can filter it through a strainer to get all the heavy stuff out. Put it in a container and you can use it for up to a year to treat other stuff. I don't know how much this tank holds, but it's got to be close to a gallon. And it says in the directions you got to keep this tank around 68 degrees for it to work best. I'm going to try to get this thing right to the filler net. Yeah, just like that. I want as much of this tank exposed as I can get it to that solution. So that's where this is going to live for the next couple days. It is filled right to the brim. And I just got it in this little bucket. So, Next thing I want to try is, you see that pitting on that? I want to see if we can get some of this clean because uh, the handlebars are the same way a little bit. And I got this metal polish that I picked up a long time ago at one of the uh, local fairs. It's called Top Bright. Pretty expensive, but uh, it works pretty good. So we'll see if we can get that to come out. I think we can get it a lot better. I don't know if we can get it perfect. Just put a little bit on a... Doesn't take all. Oh, doesn't take a lot either. That's like way too much. This stuff works wicked good. I think you can use it on all kinds of metals too, if I remember right. Yeah, it's unsurpassed for copper, brass, silver, gold, chrome, nickel, pewter, aluminum, magnesium, etc. It was one of those uh, whims that I, I don't know, I was at the fair, and you know how sometimes if you go to the fair and they got their little thing set up and their super high pressure tactics to get you to buy something? Well, I was young, and I, I was probably 18 years old. I mean, we're talking a long time ago. And uh, I bought this stuff, and I've had a bunch, I've used it over the years a bunch of times, but uh, it just always works. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I don't remember what I paid for it, but uh, I want to say I think it was probably pretty expensive even back then. But, you know, if it works, is, does that really matter? You know what I mean? So, this isn't perfect. But it's sure of a heck of a lot better than it was. There. And there it is. I mean, look at that. It's not going to take out the pits, obviously, um, if it's got any any pitting in there. But, I mean, that thing is shiny. And it looks good. And it got rid of all that little... Uh, I mean, you can see my reflection in it. There I am. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's not going to take out the pits, but, I mean, it's all original now. And, I mean... I don't know. That looks good. That looks acceptable to me. And uh, if I didn't fast forward, it probably took me about a minute. So at least that gives me some hope we can do that. We'll maybe use that to clean up the handlebars. So just to give you a re recap, if you haven't seen last week's episode, I'll put a link up here somewhere. You guys can check that out. But this is where we left off. So let's get going. So now that we got the tank sitting for a while, we'll probably let that sit for a day or two. We gotta get this thing stripped because we either gotta get this off to powder coat or to paint, one of the two. So let's get going. And whenever I do something like this, I n never can take too many pictures or uh, create enough labeling or whatever. So I like to take all my hardware and put it in a bag and write what it's for. So for this, it's going to be for the front skid plate. Yeah, so that way I just I mark it front skid plate, four bolts. That way if, you know, something should happen, this bag could rip, I know that I'm looking for four bolts. That, that held this on. So it just makes things easier uh, and keeps keeps me from getting confused. I've done a few projects like this over the years.
That's pretty impressive, considering that's been on there for a long time. Huh, this one spun right off. Told you this hasn't seen a lot of use. Alright, we'll flip it down and get that exhaust off. We'll be able to work on that at some point. Be kind of fun to make a stainless exhaust for this, wouldn't it? It looked pretty neat too. Oh, of course. Yeah, so what do you guys think about this? I'm thinking about going with uh, black, a black frame, just like a matte, pretty much what came from the factory, and pretty much doing it the way it came with the... Uh, I think it's called Silver Cloud, or Cloud Silver is what Honda uses for the wheels. I'm thinking about just keeping it pretty stock, um, but I don't know. Do you, what do you guys think? Should I, should I do something a little different, go crazy with a color scheme? I don't know. You tell me. There we go. Uh, what's that? That fell out. I don't know what happened there. Wow. Doo -doo -doo. One thing we're going to have to do is knock all the dents out of, out of this thing. It, that shouldn't be too bad. We can take this, take this cover off, knock all the dents out of it, and then I'll just sand down the exhaust and we'll paint it with like a uh, stove paint or something like that. Oh wow, I'll be able to take this whole assembly right off as one. That'll be nice. There's a little bit of play in these uh, tie rods, so we'll probably end up changing those out too. I mean, once you go this far, might as well, right? I mean, I think they're cheap. They're, they're like probably like $16 for a whole new set. That way your front end's all nice and tight. See this wire right here that can, clips into this... Uh, yellow wire with a red tracer and then it goes down and it's just grounded out with this connector well I always wondered over the years what that was for uh, I figured it out what it is is by grounding this out like that inside here there's a neutral safety switch and the contacts go bad over time uh, it's just apparently a, it was a common problem with these Hondas and what someone did was is they overrode that safety switch so that they wouldn't have that problem so this actually will start in gear, um, so I'm I'm really not too crazy about uh, crazy about that. So we'll have to get that fixed too at some point. But kind of wondered what that was. So you know, if you've got one of these older Honda eighty six eighty seven, that yellow wire with the red tracer, it's coming out of this case right here, and it's going down to that neutral safety switch inside, grounding it, uh, bypasses it. So. All right, you ready to dump it out? I'm real curious to see what this uh, liquid looks like. Remember, it used to be clear when we poured it in. I'm hoping it's going to be real dark because that means it removed a lot of rust. Yeah, I can already see that the liquid's a dark color inside. Like I say, they say it's non-toxic, so I'm not going to sweat wearing gloves. It's not an acid. Yeah, it definitely did something. Cause look at the uh, look at the liquid. 
This was, uh, when we rinsed this out yesterday, this was crystal clear. Ha! Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, oh yeah, guys. Huge. Let, let me bring you in. Let me show you. I'm totally blown away. You see that, guys? That little spot right there? Do you remember that? That spot in the beginning? I'll put a clip of that uh, right there for comparison. This stuff is awesome. There's, there's a tiny bit of rust right down in there still. Uh, just a little bit, not, not too crazy. I'm gonna let it soak a little bit longer. I'm not sure if you guys can see this side, um, but this side actually had like scaly rust in the bottom. It's got none, it's, it's bare metal. Like what you see right here at the hump of the tank, down in there, um, down in that tank, there's no rust whatsoever. It's all, well, there you go. Yeah, it's all silver. You, it's just like silvery color, there's no rust. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Bright, shiny. Ha! That's awesome. All right, this is awesome. I'm excited. So I'm going to put uh, this solution back in and let it do its magic for a little bit longer. Um, what I'm super excited about, though, is I didn't really want to put a tank liner in this tank, and I've read a little bit about them and I guess the tank liners work really well uh, until the tank liner fails and you know if the tank liner comes undone or something happens inside the tank and it starts like chipping or failing I guess it's a huge pain to get the liner out and I guess at that time I'd have to put a plastic tank on it anyways but um, I don't know I'm just super happy with this product I mean I can't say it's going to work for everyone it would work for you know, for you, but I'm just saying what it did for me. And the bottom of this tank inside was was pretty bad. And um, when I I, don't, I can't remember if I told you guys this or not um, in the beginning of this episode, but um, in the very beginning, when when I bought this four wheeler, that was one of the issues it had. It had a lot of rust in the bottom. And at the time, um, I didn't really know about like etching fluids or acids and this product wasn't even around um, so I ended up just cleaning it out with gasoline and those nuts like I showed you here just a little while and it did a really good job um, enough that it got it running again and but over the years just setting it kind of got scaly rust in it again in the bottom well now it's down to bare metal I've never seen this tank look like this uh, in the you know 18 or so years that I've owned it this tank will outlast me probably as long as we keep it filled with gas and we don't have water in the gas we'll be all set so, and then when it's all said and done after this sits a little bit longer I'm gonna rinse it out flush the tank out um, dump some of this in it spray it in it it's called dry coat it says dry coats clean safe easy to use solution pre uh, preventing rust on iron and steel it dries to the touch without sticky residue it's water-based, non-toxic, environmentally safe. Um, so, yeah. So we're going to be, I'm just going to squirt the inside of this so that in the meanwhile, while this sits empty and dry, that it doesn't rust up on us <laughs> before we get to put it back into our project. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to find out what I'm doing before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can check me out on Facebook and on Instagram. There'll be links down below. And if this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Until next week, guys, I'll see you then. Stay safe. Have a good day. See ya. Come, come.